Welcome to the pavilion at Port Orange. We've got everything here. We've got a Chuck E. Cheese. We've got an Olive Garden over there. We've got Takara over there now. We've got some stores over there. We've got like Michaels. We've got Marshalls. We've got Texas Roadhouse. We got Loud Birds. We got everything here. About to get into an awesome session here. Let's get to it. Alrighty, first hand we're gonna dive into here. We look down at Ace Nine off suit in the big blind. There are four limps to us, so not really a hand we want to raise over four limpers. So we decided to check our options. So we're going five ways to a multi-way first hand with a flop that comes ace, nine, four, flop top two pair. So we're feeling pretty good. Feels like it's gonna be a good session, small blind checks. And because it was a limp pot, we take the initiative here. We bet 15 and somehow every other player folds. So kind of uh, interesting trying to def figure out what kind of uh, table we're up against here. But we take down a the first nice little pot that we Alrighty, next big hand we're gonna look at here. We look down at 9-10 suited on the button. And there's a middle position open to 20 and a late position call. So judging by the results from last vlog, if you uh, saw the horror with that suited connector in late position, we decided to take the conservative route here and just flat. So we are going three ways to a flop. That comes 9-9-5. We have, that's the second flop that we smash in a row. The pre-flop aggressor doesn't know the pain that he's in for and continues for 40. The other player folds and it's back onto us and we want to build a pot as quickly as we can here. So we put in the raise to 115. That pre-flop aggressor decides on the call. So we're going heads up to a turn. Heads up to a turn, which is a card you love to see. It's a red 10. So we make top full house, well, technically second top full house to pocket tens, but it's very unlikely our opponent has that, since there's only one combo of pocket tens left, and the pre-flop aggressor checks, and we don't take much time at all before betting 125, trying to just build this pot and give us a nice stacked pot ratio to jam the river. Eventually, the our opponent calls, so we're going heads up to a turn, which is another card you'll love to see. It doesn't get much better than a red jack. The flush gets there, some wonky straight draws get there, and the only hands that really beat us now are pocket tens, pocket jacks, and jack nine, which our opponent shouldn't really have any of those hands. So when they check to us, we very confidently put the rest of our stack in the middle, really hoping for a call, uh, since there's a lot of hands that should be able to pay us off here. Uh, the pre-fall progressor thinks for about like two minutes before eventually letting it go. So we scoop a very healthy pot here feeling like this session is going to be a pretty solid one. Jeez, you guys remember when movie theaters were a thing? Like this video if you think the corona will end and movie theaters will reopen. Remember when I said this session was going to be really solid? Yeah, I kind of lied. Uh, what feels like hours go by, and we don't really pick up many playable hands, and we start trying to make something out of nothing and start bleeding out, just kind of like this hand. Like, we look down at Ace Jack Offsuit in middle position. There's a early position open to 20, and you know, when you're running card dead, you kind of make decisions that aren't usually that advisable, but that's not gonna stop us with this hand. We three bet to 60. Folds back to that player who makes the call. And we're going heads up to a flop, which comes 7-7-10. Seven, seven, now, normally this board would be pretty good for the three better range and my range, because you know paired boards are generally good like that. But it was at that moment that I realized that I had three bet the table whale. And they're gonna have plenty of sevens, and uh, they're not gonna fold tens, uh, a ten here at all. So when they check to us, I I just check back because so when they check to us a second time, after the return comes a deuce. You know, it should pretty much be time to start betting, but uh, if I still believe they're not going to pull a 10, then there's really no point considering that we're behind and we're just kind of value owning ourselves. So ultimately, I just check back, uh, heads up to a river, which comes in offsuit five. Now this must be the time to start betting, right? Well, that's probably the right play and many would, but I decide after he checks to us to just kind of give up, and check back and the whale indeed turns over king 10 offsuit and said that he wouldn't fold pretty much to any bet. So uh, yeah, looks like our bad play kind of worked out for us. So sometimes premonitions be like that. 
Alrighty, so next hand we're gonna look at here, we looked down at eight, nine of diamonds in late position. There is an early position raise to 15, which is kind of small. Uh, I consider three betting here, but uh, again, we're looking at more conservative routes this, uh, this session, so we make the call. Uh, both the blinds call, so we're going four ways to a flop, which comes five, six, nine, one diamond. So we flop pretty good. We got top pair, uh, a gutter, and a backdoor flush draw. It checks all the way to us, so we really want to protect our equity here, and we bet 40. Only the player in the big blind calls, so we're going heads up to a pretty ugly turn, all things considered, and said offsuit ace. So any ace high flush draw that floated flop is now ahead and we can't make a flush anymore. So when the big blind checks, since our hand was severely downgraded, we decide to check back. So we're going heads up to another ugly card on the river. It's an offsuit king. So now there's two overs that can beat us. And when the big blind bets 65, there's not really much we can do. Yeah, and even though it's a pretty decent price, we, we don't really beat a whole lot. So uh, I think we kind of have to let this one go. So we make a conservative lay down here and protect our chips for the future. As the night gets later and later, ugly hands are starting to look prettier and prettier. So we're in the hijack with queen jack off suit and we open to 25. Somehow we get three callers, the button in both lines. So we're going four ways to a flop, which comes seven, eight, nine. So close to the nuts. Um, when it checks to us, we got two offsuit overs in a gutter, so uh, not really strong enough to bet into three people, so we check. Uh, finish check finishes checking around, uh, so we're going with the same gang to a turn, and that turn is a pretty horrendous card. It's another eight, so uh, our hand just keeps getting worse. Uh, it checks to us again, and considering our hand has been even further downgraded, we're not really looking to bet this one into the same three people, so we check. We finish checking each other out, and we're going same four of us to the river, which is an offsuit 10. Didn't really expect to nail the gutter, but hey, we'll take it. Uh, the small blind decides to take the stab here for 60, and when it folds to us, this is one of those rare situations where I think the correct play is raise fold, where we always raise, and if we get re-raised, we always fold, because I think we have to get more value from a jack that thinks they're chopping. With that mentality, we put in the raise to 200, Button folds back to the small blind, and we get the bad news when they min click it back to 400 that we're pretty much always behind. So, sticking to the game plan, we can take a minute to just complain about the situation before ultimately letting it go. Our opponent was nice enough to show us pocket sevens for indeed having the full house. So, making tough laydowns, but we can do that every day. In a last ditch effort to try to make some of our money back before we rack up, we look down at King Queen off suit in late position, and we open to 35. The only player that calls is the small blind who had previously limped over the button straddle. So we're going heads up to a pretty awesome flop, which comes eight, 10, Jack. We've got two overs and an open-ended straight draw. Now, when the small blind checks to us, this would absolutely be the time for a big C bet, right, Alex? Well, at the time, I was too fatigued to even realize that we were open-ended. Um, the eight on the board really had me tunnel visioned into thinking we can only hit a nine for a straight. And this player we're up against is a player that doesn't like folding and really likes to make big bluffs very frequently. So uh, not my proudest moment, but I do live to tell the story that we indeed checked back. But um, we're going heads up to a turn and all the disappointment fades away when the dealer puts out the brilliant offsuit nine. So we make our gutter anyway, our gutter, we make our straight anyway. And what's even better is the small blind takes the initiative to bet 25 and feeling pretty hungry for some value with our six card straight. We don't take much time before raising to 75. It might've been a little trigger happy because the small blind very quickly lets it go. All food for thought for next time. That's gonna about wrap up this vlog recap. That's gonna about wrap up this session recap. We were there for about four hours and finished down about 430. That's about $108 an hour or 22 big blinds per hour. Now this vlog was actually part of a larger downswing, not entirely captured by the vlog, and man, I'm about ready to get out of it. Stay tuned to see if I do. This is Runner Runner Poker. Remember, keep your body healthy, keep your mind healthy. Have a good one.